Right, in my hands are what I consider to be two of what will be the biggest selling irons for both Titleist and TaylorMade in this current rollout. It is the P790 and the T200. Both sit in that sort of ground where it covers a whole spectrum of golfers. They're going to appeal to players, they're going to appeal to the sort of game improvement type market and plenty in between. What I'm going to try and do in this video is give you my opinion on the difference between the two models, which I would prefer personally, and if we can identify what those differences are and which might best suit you if you're considering either one of these two models as an iron replacement this year. Now before we even consider how these two things differ in terms of performance, there's already one massive thing that separates the two, and that's down to you. And it's down to your bias, I suppose, to a brand, because I think there's a real big difference between people who are team Titleist and people who are team tailor-made. And I think out there, I want to know from your opinion, are you team Titleist or are you team tailor-made? And would either one of these models make you switch that alliance? So when you've got over your allegiance to the brand and you might be considering buying one of these things, the first thing for me is shelf appeal. What am I looking at when I walk into a store on the shelf? They don't help you hit the golf ball any better, but I don't care what anybody says, we first buy with our eyes, or at least I do anyway. And uh, I said in the P790, it's been, uh, it's been streamlined, if you like. Uh, a lot of the sort of, there wasn't a lot of clutter going on behind the club in the previous models, but they've thinned it out a little bit. There's less markings again. They've gone for a kind of satin finish that I would liken more to what Ping have done in the past, the i500 range, a little bit of chrome in there. And again, for me, I mentioned in the previous video, I probably slightly preferred the sort of a bit more chrome. I like a bit of bling and I preferred the look of the previous model in many ways, but I can also, this thing is growing on me and there's a difference behind the ball, which we'll talk about later on. With the Titleist T200, again, Massive fan of the AP3s for me, it's a model I've always been a fan of. And again, the looks of it, it's classic in terms of the shaping, tightly shaping that is. Even the number on the bottom, the sole is straight away, you recognize it as being a tightless club. The back end, however, is slightly different. It's all filled in. I kind of think it will appeal to some and not to everybody. For me on a personal level, I really like the look of it. And I've only seen this in images so far, never actually seen it in the flesh. And it's a product for me which looks much better on the eye when I've actually got it in hand. And I've got to admit, it's, it's a quality finish on it all the way around the product. And again, when I move off this seat and get it behind the ball, I'll talk about how they differ at address because that's the next thing to perhaps consider. I just mentioned at address and it's a, usually, I think, well for me anyway, this can be a massive uh, part of the decision making process it really just depends on the eye what you see it address and for me i could not split the way these two look and i'll show you from a number of different angles but first of all i said from address the width of the top line i would like to get a sort of uh, a tape measure on it because they look very very similar if you look closely closely the t200 is slightly wider but they've chamfered the back edge so it just gives that look of being just that little bit thinner but only thins it down to what you can see in terms of the p790 both frame the ball very well i really like the fact in the p790 what they did in this model for me again at least visually it looks to be less offset um, and i would say that's the only slight difference you can perhaps see but again really got to pay attention to see those differences and you look from the back end and again nothing you see at address and from the sole units again sort of similar widths if you can just have a look at those two there nothing nothing to split them at all so on a visual perspective i would say that at address you're seeing quite easily if the finish was the same and i put you in sort of sort of blind test i think you'd do really well to split these two they're so similar in terms of looks and that thick line is still going to appeal to it's not overly big but it's still going to give you that little bit of confidence for people who are looking for it and it's by no means down that sort of player's end of the market the next big deal for me and granted this isn't the most scientific of testing but sound and feel are massive for me when i'm buying a set of irons and we've got the hollow bodied version of the uh, of the tailor made with its new speed foam supposedly making better sounds and therefore feel and the tungsten that's in the t200 is the real big selling point of that product Differences for me, how do they sound? And I said it's not the most scientific. I've got a microphone placed down by the ball as well as the one that's on my collar. And we'll just record a few shots and see if you can pick up and uh, agree with me in terms of the noise differences. First one, we're on P790 is what you're listening to right now. Another one with that.
a pretty decent balls as well that we've hit and I think to be honest with you the two sounds that I heard with that were exactly what uh, I've been hearing throughout the whole testing so I think we caught them fairly clean let's try that same test with the T200 and like I said I've no idea how good this is going to be picking the audio up but hopefully it gives you some idea right T200 next I mean it's literally first ball and I hope you can see or hear rather you can't see it there's a massive difference in the sound one more so you can pick that up okay so you've heard the two balls um, I'll play them back again alongside one another see if you can spot the differences Right, so you've heard those both played back and uh, I don't know whether you can pick it up like I said but from my perspective there's a huge difference between the two. The P790 still for me has a bit of a clicky sound to it. Again, the idea that it's forged but with that hollow body I still don't think they've achieved that anything like what a forged fears and for me one of the, the only probably negative I can pick up on the P790s is that slightly clicky sound and then you go to the T200 and it's a lot of a sort of duller, more muted sound, almost like a bit of a heavy sound. Um, Dull is the word I would perhaps use in terms of the sound from it. So it's a totally different feel altogether. And it just, I don't think either of them sit greatly on my ear. And again, just to put it into some sort of perspective, I prefer and always have done, I love the sound and feel from a forged iron. And neither of them sound anything like or feel like anything like a forged iron. And they're not geared to do that. But the T200, like I said, slightly heavier. And for me, it is really a preference on a lesser of two evils. I don't think. I don't think they're the standout performing part of either of these two products, sound and feel, would not be up there. Right, data collected, and uh, I'll be honest with you, I would normally collect a, uh, a broader range of shots, a broader range of data, but it became soon apparent that I, the T200 I, uh, I started with, it performed very consistently, the numbers were fairly consistent, I quickly moved on to the P790, being comfortable with what I had gathered, and the same applied to the P790, so it wasn't a case of, I don't think if we rolled this out to another 50 balls each, it would differ that greatly, because they were both very, very consistent. It's the first review on a Monday morning, Club head speed is down a little, but it's down for both. But again, quite a good thing to be honest with you. I think more in line with maybe what you're swinging rather than full tilt, which sometimes what can be a review video once you've warmed up a little bit. This is perhaps a little bit more likely to how you'd swing a little bit more controlled out there on the golf course. So if I put the numbers in terms of, uh, I'll put all the numbers up to the T200 first of all. 78.5, I'd normally be in the sort of 81 maybe, if you sort of full tilt. And everything is obviously relative to that club head speed or usually relative to club head speed. But if we go through the averages, 78.5 miles per hour average, 112 ball speed, 62 spin, 153 carry, launching at 20 degrees. I think all those numbers are exactly where you'd expect them to, expect them to be. The 7 iron with a T200 has a loft of 31 degrees. That's the important thing we need to remember. And I think if you were looking at, this is called a player's distance iron. That's the category they like to put these into now. A few years back there'd be a massive criticism on this as one being strongly lofted and two being uncontrollable in terms of spin dropping off you can see that now is a thing of the past there's no doubt that uh, technology is meant now that the balls are launching higher even with those sort of uh, stronger lofts and the spin control is there 6200 spin that average carrier 153 and a great deal of consistency over those numbers really really good performance from the tightest product then I'll swap into the P790. I think I only hit five balls with the P790. Slightly lower average in terms of 78.3 and a faster ball speed of 114. Now, a couple of mile an hour difference, and it could argue that there is half a degree in terms of loft difference. These are 30.5 in terms of the strength of loft. I'm not sure that would make two mile an hour in terms of ball speed. So potentially for me, 
The face on the P790 is with that little bit quicker. 6.2 spin, again a great number, and 157 carry. So a four yard difference in carry, launching exactly the same. You've always got to bear in mind, like I said, that half a degree difference, and you make up your own minds how much impact that would have in terms of the yardage difference. And the four yards is almost, it's neither in or there, to be honest with you. All I will say for me, testing them, um, it's in pretty much as I would always do, and maybe throw a few up now, showing you where I hit on the club face, and it's never consistently in the middle spot. I would say that perhaps the P790 just edged it a little bit in terms of that forgiveness and overall performance for me, uh, certainly this morning. Um, but there is little to split them in any sort of category. I've never seen two irons that are so similar in terms of the way they look at a dress, the way they've performed in terms of all those different categories. The only difference I've got is the sound difference, and it's quite different for me. Uh, one is clicky, one's a bit duller. That would be very much a personal thing. And then I think, go back to the beginning of the video, it depends where you sit. If you're team Titleist or team Taylor made, I think you generally sort of stay in one of those two camps. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, hit that like button, but more importantly, get the comments down below. The T200 has been out for a little while, I think, in terms of you being able to try them. So if you have got your hands on these and there's some demos of the P790s about, give me your feedback. It helps your fellow golfers take a little bit of a glance and a read and see if you either agree with my opinion, disagree, doesn't matter which one it is, but it gives your fellow golfers just some highlighted indicators of what the general sense of opinion is on these two different sets of irons. Right, that's me done. I will see you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching.